Hey kids, it's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and today uh, we're going to talk about how we react when we're afraid of something. Uh, when we when we come across something that we're afraid of, we, we we tend to try and control it. And if we can't control it, we tend to try and run from it. And, and so if we're, we're trying to control something, like this is something you can kind of reason through, ask yourself, are we working by the law or by the gospel? We'll give you an example. Uh, hypothetically, I'm walking into youth group one day and uh, I see a kid on the roof of the church. And this is bad. I look around and I'm afraid because like, never mind, he's not setting a great example for the other kids. Never mind that um, he could get hurt. He might even die. His parents would be really mad at me and that has me, that has me scared. Uh, so I can say one of two things to him. I can say, remember your baptism. You are a child of God. You are united with Christ in his death and his resurrection. You are already now tied to the victory over the grave. So like just whatever happens up there, remember you're effectively immortal. Or I can say, Wyatt, get off the roof. In this hypothetical story, the kid's name is hypothetically Wyatt. Hypothetically. You know which one I said. Because we want control. Control is not of the gospel. Control is of the law. We use the law to try and exert control on the, the forces around us, the world around us, the people around us, on ourselves. And, and honestly, that's not a bad thing for it to do because sin breaks stuff. And so if you want things to go better, live according to the law. The problem is that, well, we know what the law tells us about ourselves. It shows us to be sinners. We then carry this into youth group once Wyatt hypothetically gets off the roof. And we get to try and teach you because we're scared of the world that you're in. The culture is crazy. We don't understand it. You're up against so many of the things that we did, but worse. And we know that it's harder and harder to be Christian. And because we're afraid for you and we just want you to get through these years without losing your faith, is it easier for us to default to the law or to the gospel? Is it easier to give Bible study after Bible study after Bible study, message and homily and sermon after message and homily and sermon after chastity and obedience or other things? Because like we know just how much damage can, can be done. And so it's so easy to make youth group about Jesus love, which means waiting until you're married and marrying somebody of the opposite sex. And youth group means that Jesus loves you, so you should listen to your parents and do what they say. And life would be better. It really would. But like, does that mean that there's room in youth group for the people who are unchaste, who are disobedient, for the people who have friends who are? If youth group is only the place where we try and exert control on something we're afraid of, namely you going out into this world, all we really do is create a place where there is no safe place to be a sinner in a church, which is the one place we're actually supposed to be comfortable saying, I poor miserable sinner. It's because we are desperate to hear, in this dead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We are desperate for these words because they actually offer to us hope and identity apart from our best efforts to control things and, and the consequences of when they didn't. We are so easily known by our sins everywhere we go that what if there was a church that existed to proclaim the gospel when we are afraid and not just the law? The default for our hearts when we are afraid is to grab hold of the law, to try and control the situation, and if nothing else, try and run from it. Use the law to, to find a, a, some wiggle room, find a loophole, find somebody to blame, find a reason that this one isn't our fault. But in all of it, the best we can do is run and blame somebody else, and the worst we can do is be convicted by it, but it will catch you sooner or later every time. Instead, when we are afraid, we have a Jesus who tells us, do not be afraid. And then he promises us that he will bear our sins, that he will name us his children in the water of, uh, of a baptism. We have, we have a God, the Father Almighty, who, who invites us into his family, making us co-heirs with the son of, of every good thing that he has won for us upon his, his, his cross, where he bore your sins, and now they're forgiven. You're known by your baptism when you're afraid. You're known by your baptism when your parents are afraid for you. Because this world is full of altogether too many crazy things. It's full of sinners. It's full of death. It's full of the devil. 
And so we proclaim hope. It turns the church into something entirely unique because we're not one more group fighting a culture war. We're not simply trying to carve out a better future in this world, but we're singing about a present hope today that exists even when things look like this, because even when things look like this, Christ is risen from the grave. Even when everything is, is absolutely crazy, you are baptized and you are not known by the craziness, the places where you have fallen, the places where you've been unchaste or disobedient. You're known by your Savior. You're known by your baptism. You are known as a child of God, holy and worthy of love. And that is doubly important to hear when we are afraid. We need to hear it from outside of ourselves. So go to a youth group, go to a church where you are hearing that your sins are forgiven because Jesus died for you. It doesn't mean that we don't care about the law. Then we can actually try and walk in the law because things go better that way because sin breaks stuff and we don't want to hurt either ourselves or somebody else. Instead, we can try and walk in the law to love God, to love our neighbor simply because things go better that way. But when they don't, we don't have to throw up our hands and say we will try better to control next time. Instead, we get to hear it's in control already because... Christ has already carved a path right through this thing into the glories of the life everlasting. He is crucified, he is risen, and you are baptized. And that is the gospel, which is the thing that we really need to hear when we're afraid.